Hello YouTube. So today I'll be making an overview of the must-have applications for any new MacBook Air or MacBook Pro user. This is an update over my previous previous videos. This will be for the holiday 2014-2015 edition. I'll be going over what applications I find I most use on my Mac, which ones I believe every Mac user should have, however it depends on the user itself. And also basically what are some cool uh, interesting applications to have on your Mac. I'm just going to start off with what's in my dock, and then I'm going to continue on into the other apps. So the first app I have is Finder. Finder everyone has. Nothing special, you use to find your files. Safari, again, simple web browser. Google Chrome is an alternative. It allows different extensions to be used. Some people prefer I personally use it alongside Safari, so it's just a matter of opinion. Mail is a normal mail app, along with Notes, which is a normal Notes app. Dictionary comes with your Mac. It's an offline dictionary, Wikipedia. Screenflow is what I use to record my screen. So this application I believe costs $100. It allows you to record your screen and then do simple edits afterwards. So it's a very nice program. I use it for all my recordings. It's fairly smooth and allows a lot of customization. Pages. Pages is essentially Microsoft Word's version uh, made by Apple. So Pages allows you to edit text. Now this is the older version of Pages. But similarly, just like Keynote, and Keynote is the PowerPoint variant, it allows you to make different presentations and export them as a PowerPoint file, or you can also export them as, say, a Keynote file or a PDF. You have the different options over here, PowerPoint, PDF, QuickTime, iPod, HTML, or Images. You also have Numbers, which is the Excel version. Now, these come free with any Mac. However, the newer version comes out. So that would be the new pages, which I personally dislike, and I prefer the 2009 version over the new one. App Store and iTunes, both are standard applications. Minecraft is simply a game where you build blocks. I'm not going to go too in-depth about it because it's very complicated, but it's essentially a virtual Lego. Euro Truck Simulator 2 is as it sounds. It's a truck driving simulator. It's a game, and I actually run this through Crossover, which I'll be talking about later. But this is a program that runs through your Mac. But it uses Windows, and I don't even have Windows installed. Pixelmator is a photo editing application. I go in depth in it inside my channel, but it essentially allows you to edit different pictures and add all sorts of cool effects, filters. It allows you to do different gradients, stickers, like say I add a sticker here. I can make it like green. I can make it yellow. I can change the background color to something else. For example, I can change it here to like green, cool green gradient. And then I can export using different file formats. So it's essentially my version of Photoshop, however you can buy it from the Mac App Store, which is very nice. iMovie 9, again, I'm using the old version because I prefer the old version over the new version. Essentially, it edits movies, comes with your Mac. AutoCAD is CAD design software. So currently I'm designing a bridge for school. So here's my bridge in 3D. You can have different designs, you can render it. This, I believe, costs a thousand dollars. It's really expensive, but through my dad, I managed to get it because he works as an engineer. But essentially, you have different options, including rendering. You get to view it. So here's a render tool. You get to design different houses, buildings, shapes, what have you. And then you can export it, see how forces react on it, etc. So this is a popsicle bridge. Next up will be Code Runner. So Code Runner allows you to run code in different languages. So this is just a combination program I've been doing with one, threes, and fours. You can do different types of com of um, scripts and allows you to switch between the different languages. So Java, uh, C Sharp, C++, Objective C, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, Shell Script, what have you. So those are different scripts. Xcode, which I won't open because of personal projects, allows you to make Mac projects. So it designs applications for your Mac using Objective-C. And it also allows you to make iPhone apps, iPad apps, basically anything in between. So it's similar to a large Visual Studio. So if you're really interested in that, it's free to download from the Mac App Store. Parallels Desktop allows you to run Windows. So I'm running Windows XP alongside my Mac right now. And it's running very well, and for basic applications, it's very nice. However, for games, I thoroughly recommend Boot Camp, 
or some other solution as you're not going to get the desired frame rate just from that. iMessages allows you to see your different messages. It comes with your Mac. And going back, Parallels Desktop costs $50 and Code Runner is, I believe, $1 on the Mac App Store. So Skype allows you to talk with different people over messages. You can video chat. It's similar kind of like Google Now or Google Hangouts and Yahoo Messenger and the previous Windows Live Messenger. Continuing on, this doctor is a really nice app. It allows you to clean your disk. It analyzes your disk for free space and sees what you can save it on. So you have 16 gigs of free space. Congratulations, you freed 370.1 megabytes. Here are just simply a list of games. I won't be going over many of them, but these are games I'll view in another video. Coconut battery allows you to see a status of your battery life. So this here we can see I have an 88% design capacity. It tells you a current charge, the age of your Mac, the load cycles, the temperature, all within this free app. So unlike this doctor which costs a dollar, this application is free of charge and allows you to monitor your disk, your battery, sorry. GFX card status allows you to change which graphics card you're currently using. So here I'm using my discrete graphics card on my MacBook Pro. Some MacBooks have different graphics cards. You can choose between them to save battery life. So currently I'm plugged in and working with heavy applications. However, if I'm not plugged in, I might choose to use integrated only to save battery life. That's a very nice application to have. Smart Converter essentially converts between file formats. That's a matter of opinion. Temperature monitor, monitor moderates the temperature on your Mac. So you can see the temperature at the battery, you can see the temperature at the processor, graphics card, etc. And we also have the option to remove it from, from uh, the dock. Next up would be CPU LED. Very simple, shows a bunch of LEDs of your CPU usage, nothing special, but it's just very nice to have. Handbrake is a free software just like these three. Handbrake allows you to compress videos, so a similar AVI file, for example, this video, 26 megabyte video, we're going to run it through the software and we're going to see how much space it really takes up. So here you can see it's running through, processing the video, and then eventually it will export an MP4 file. The difference in quality is not that visible. In fact, sometimes it's not even visible. However, the difference is definitely visible in the file in the file size. So this one is 26 megabytes, and now the other file is almost completed. Done. Now this one will be 6.7 megabytes, and the quality is the exact same. So that's fantastic. For large videos, like 2 gig videos, it will really make the difference between finishing uploading in 1 hour or 15 minutes. Definitely a must have free app. Blackmagic Disk Speed Test essentially tests to see the speed of your hard drive. Nothing special, free application. Windows Live Messenger is outdated messenger. VLC is essentially preview. It allows you to see movies, videos, blend between preview and iTunes. Arduino is a circuit builder. It allows you to create code for circuits. I use this for engineering class. Smarter is used for notes, so note taking, etc., etc. Clear day is used for weather, so it provides a weather forecast. So you can see here, clear day, and it also provides a nice little notification here. So while I'm on the computer, I can always see how many degrees it's outside, and the future forecast. So here I can see how the temperature will be on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, three hour forecast, and also the wind, etc. And it gives a really, really nice graphic and also different maps such as temperature, clouds, and the wind. So the speed of the wind. This application costs one dollar on the Mac App Store. Next up would be self-control. Self-control disables different websites for a certain amount of time. So this is my blacklist. So essentially, I'm not allowed to go on any on any website except these websites. And I can block myself for several hours at a time in order to concentrate on a specific task. 
Google Earth is just simply Google Earth. Parallels Desktop is the Windows XP, Windows 7 virtualization software, which allows you to see a different operating system. Graphical comes with your Mac and allows you to graph functions. This is useful for math. So if you have a function, for example, 4x plus 4, you can graph the function using this. And there's definitely more advanced options, but I'm not old enough to actually know how to do them. But certainly for some users, that will be a very powerful tool. MacX Video Converter Pro is essentially a selection of media software. It allows you to see different uh, so, uh, different videos, download YouTube videos, it allows you to make screen recordings, make photo albums. I have an in-depth video over the software on my channel, but for the sake of this video, I won't review it. Continuing on onto useful, personal budget allows you to make a personal budget for $1. It's a very nice, simple, graphic-related application. Just in order to give a heads up for all these applications, I have reviews on my channel, so for more in-depth information, please be sure to view that. Project Planner allows you to make different projects, so you can make charts, resources, tasks, and basically take note of how you're progressing through the calendar with your project. Next up would be Audacity. Audacity allows you to edit different audio files. It's a very nice free tool, and it's very powerful. Text Wrangler is similar to Code Runner. It's a text editing software for programming. Free memory frees your RAM. So as you see here, we have a certain amount of inactive memory. If we click free memory, it'll go through the cache and it'll actually save a significant amount of memory. So it can actually make a computer faster or it can make it slower. The inactive memory acts as a cache so that your, program, your computer can reload programs quickly. But if you have an SSD, personally, I'd use the free memory. It's a very nice free tool. And look, I save 1.82 gigs, which is a significant amount. Now my computer feels a little bit snappy. Google SketchUp is similar to AutoCAD and ArchiCAD in the sense that it allows you to build different buildings. It's free from Google. Be sure to check it out. Sketchbook Pro is from Autodesk, same maker as AutoCAD. It allows you to make different drawings. It's mostly for tablet artists. I'm not one of them but it gives you a variety of different tools to make different graphic designs such as markers and so on and so forth. This is a paid, paid application, however there is a light version. Monolingual is a must have for any, for any user of an SSD where you want to save up on space. This allows you to delete different types of languages. So here I can say that I want to delete all of my languages except for French Canadian, Romanian, okay. I'll click remove, continue, and now it'll be removing all of the languages that I do not need to use. And it'll save a significant amount of space because there's different programs having different languages that you never ever use. And it really adds up. You can save up to, I believe it was 3 gigs the first time I used it. So it's actually quite significant. Next up would be. Mm, at notes, at notes essentially allows you to make notes and put notes on your computer. So here we can add a note, and then you will have a little note floating on your desktop that you can move around, and you can also pin it or change the colors. This is a very nice application. It's fairly cheap, and it's very customizable and allows tons of options. Again, I have a review of these applications on my channel. Crossover, which I've used with Euro Truck Simulator allows the user to run different applications through your Mac that are actually intended for Windows. So it's a very complicated procedure. However, you essentially create a bottle for the application to run. Now only some applications work, and it's very difficult to explain in this short video. But essentially for this paid software, it allows you to virtualize some programs, and there may be severe issues with it. There's a free alternative called Wine, so be sure to check it out. But it may run simple software. Now for me, it runs a full-on game, Euro Truck Simulator 2, so you may be in love for your favorite game to run without even installing Windows. So this is my overview of the must-have Mac applications. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and please be sure to check out the different videos on my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye.